Glenn Parker High Vibration Foundation. Thank you very much for joining me. I want to talk about non-disinterest, non-attachment today. What the hell is that? It's an interesting concept that I've heard from a number of different places. And uh, it basically states that you are not disinterested in the person, so you're not, you know, eh, oh, I don't see you. But you're not attached at the same time. So a lot of people, when they are talking to somebody, want them so much to be acknowledged. You want this and you want that, or maybe it's sex, or maybe it's any number of things, and you're so attached. It's like, oh, relax. It's okay. You are whole and complete yourself. So it is synergistic with the idea of being whole and complete yourself. You don't need anybody, so you're not attached to anybody or any outcome. You're following your highest excitement, and you're not disinterested. They're another human being or this other event that's happening Oh, okay. Well, is that exciting? Is that of interest to me? Let me feel that energetically. Do I want to interact with this person? Oh, sure. You know, how are you? What's going on? And you get into an energetic flow. So you're in your own excitement, energetic eddy, and then all of the excited things will start to reveal themselves because you are in an energetic flow, parallel realities that will reveal themselves more and more and more of your excitement. So... The core concept of being whole and complete and integrating it with non-disinterest, non-attachment, there's many, there's numeral, numerable amount of exercises to do for non-disinterest, non-attachment. Um, I used to do the Kabbalistic cross, which was, uh, it's has twofold. It was a pagan ritual, I found out, but it was also an exercise in the Kabbalah. And uh, it was, I think it was modified, the one that I did, and it really is just an intentional type of exercise where you're going through like all four of these gates, what it would be called in, for, for an Indian, um, for American Indians. Um, did a sweat lodge once and that's kind of stuck with me, a traditional American sweat lodge. So you go through all four gates and you're in the center and basically you're anchoring what your intentions are, whatever your intentions are. It's a meditation is what it is. And uh, you do it preferably outside if you can so that you're connected with the earth and barefoot would be, you know, even more ideal. Um, so that you're grounded with something. You can do it in a park. You can do it out in your backyard. As long as you can be physically grounded, you know, in the grass or the dirt in a safe area that you can, you know, not be gawked at or, or have unless that doesn't bother you. That you don't have interruptions or other energies, you know, floating around to where you can be with your own energy. Um, and you can do this maybe through Bashar's transformative shifting exercise. You can do this through uh, the holotope experience. Um, you can do this through um, sacred circuitry, you know, the 15 symbols that are out so far, 15 more on their way. And any number of exercises, getting into the vortex from Abraham Hicks, anything. You know, it's basically the, doing it physically, Doing a physical exercise, I found, is much better. It could be a yoga practice. It could be a tantra practice. It could be anything. The idea is to anchor that you are whole and complete, and there's any number of ways to do that. I have tons of videos that talk about things like this, and I uh, don't want to get into that vast of detail, but the idea is that you are saving your own energetics for you. So you're not giving out sexual energy. You're not giving out any mental energy. You are keeping all of your energetics for yourself, um, tantra exercises and yoga exercises are really good for this because they are very focused on the chakra centers. You're focused on chakra alignment. When you do things like the Kabbalistic cross, you are actually spiraling energy energetically down and energy energetically up through the earth through your chakras and you're integrating yourself and you're integrating the idea and the energy that you want to work on and focus on, whether it be a twin flame, manifestation of money, or any number of things. So all those things are applicable and are very important to be able to do for a manifestation. But you should only do them if they're exciting. If you're doing them every day and it doesn't seem exciting and it seems like a chore or work, uh, don't do them every day. Do what is exciting to you. Your excitement energetically will prevent, will, will not prevent, will reveal what needs to be there when it needs to be there and it will prevent you from being in... An eddy that doesn't have your excitement in it. And if you follow your excitement, the things that don't need to be there um, won't be there. So that person that might have heckled you or that cashier that you don't like that you usually end up getting, oh, they're on vacation today or they're not working there anymore. They're not 
in your parallel reality, in your bubble reality anymore. So this is just another way, another permission slip to create another bubble reality for yourself. And this works for business. Now you have people like Donald Trump, high-end actors and actresses, every A-list actor, the top actresses and actresses, Jim Carrey and Angelina Jolie and blah, 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 blah. They know and do these types of things. They have built them into themselves or as an entity in this lifetime that was what they wanted to experience and they built it into their energetics before they were, when they were born. As part of their template, template level reality, they wanted to have that experience, but you can help build that into your matrix and into your energy state where if you are in non-disinterest and non-detachment and you have all your own energy for yourself and you're not leaking sexual energy and you're not leaking your mental energy, you create a vacuum in nature. And this vacuum, this void has to be filled with other things and you will find people chasing after you and asking you questions and you will find great excitement in the things and people and synchronicity that will happen in your life. Now I practiced this, this is like 2004, 2005, I was exposed to it and I, I did a little bit, a little bit. And then it really, I built it into my energy state where it's really not, it's, it's an unconscious competence now. I don't have to consciously work on it. So doing these energetic exercises, whatever one you want to choose, allows you to build that into your energy state. It goes uncom unconscious competence, eventually coming to conscious competence, or conscious competence, eventually going into unconscious competence so that you don't have to think about what you're doing. It's just energetically built into your energetic state. Um, and by visualizing it and doing these exercises, you really build it into your matrix and you ground it in, you ground it into your very thought patterns. So you're rewiring your brain. I think that's what I wanted to share. It is, I think, important in, oh, one last thing, boys and girls. Neutrality, non-disinterest and non-attachment is integral to neutrality because you are saving all your energy for yourself. It is more important to have it for yourself than leaking it out, whether it be sexual energy, whether it be mental energy, whether needing another person, whatever that is. That is more truly of a neutrality state. Now, neutrality is key for integration coming into 20, the, now that we're mid-2015, we're really feeling the acceleration for the span. And now that the span will be over at the end of the year, uh, 2016 is going to be even more and more important to be in neutrality and to know that other entities, whatever they're experiencing, are experiencing it by their own choice and to go more into your excitement and allow them to experience what they want to experience so that you can create a bubble reality and come with the rest of us that want to experience more of manifestation of first contact, more unconditional love, and the peace that will last for a thousand years that will actually spur a phenomenal amount of things. Now, when Bashar and other entities say that we cannot describe to you what you're going to turn into in those thousand years, as an entity, your mind, as it is right now, cannot perceive, cannot comprehend, we cannot, we do not have words in your language that you could perceive what you're going to be. That sounds rather exciting now, that something that I can become as a seed of humanity right now, as the seed of those ideas of the thousand years of peace, and turning into something that would be the phoenix frequency as what has been described, to be the phoenix civilization and to go into the phoenix frequency and to be a being that has great understanding of all the darkness and all the light to be able to be able to communicate that to other entities and to teach and be great teachers is my preference and what I would like. And non-disinterest, non-attachment, which gives you more neutrality and keeps more of your energy, I think is a critical item in doing that. Now, there's tons of ways to go about this. Um, those are more toward like uh, having conversations because it's all individual to the person that wants to get those done. So now that's everything I wanted to share. Thank you very much for joining me. Again, Glenn Parker, High Vibration Foundation. Um, many, many, many cool things down in the description below and always being updated even though there's like 170 videos or something I, I go in and then when i have updates once a month i go and copy and paste every description and every video and uh, so that there are updates and new things that are going on so always take a look at the description always new things going on and uh, please like subscribe and share and uh, coaching life business and spiritual thank you very much for joining me